Screen back. You're back in an animation. I'm back in animation, which is why I haven't worked on quilts for two years. That's really interesting. So I have more questions about um, your quilting robot. Yeah. Your quilting robot looks really intimidating. Do you feel, and the stuff you do is incredibly brilliant. It's the, uh, the pie, um, the pie uh, quilt and the um, periodic table quilt. Yeah, I mean, they're just... They're well, those all, are Teos, right? That's Teos, I know. They're incredible. Yeah. I have to, I'll have to interview him. He's like, they're just, all of it is just gorgeous. Everything you do on that machine is just like uh, the, you have, what? what is it, the money that you did on it? What was the money? Oh, yeah, the the $1,000 bill. That was our first project. That was hard, too. That yeah. took a long time. Uh, anyway, the, it's all super cool. Do you, so I have this theory. So I've been quilting every night. Um, I'm a very average, I'm, like, I'm a kick-ass uh, copyright professor, but I'm a super average quilter. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Um, but I really do believe there's a, a moment where, like, my, I'm not an art, my daughter's an artist. I'm not an artist. Um, I, I like to play. But there's a certain point where I'm just not going to get, I'm never going to be you. I'm never going to be um, that. And I'm okay with it. I think that's probably true with this machine as well. You guys make it look so gorgeous. But if I bought one of those, if I had a windfall of money I had to spend, I don't think it would look that way. I think that there's, do you agree with that? Do you think there's a certain level like you have to just be artistic? I mean, to get to what you guys are doing, it's just a well, different level. Do you okay. know what I'm saying? No, you would make beautiful quilts on this quilt robot because it comes with a bunch of stock quilt patterns that are designed for working on traditional quilts. So in terms of the actual quilting part of quilting, yeah. your quilts would look, you know, incredibly right. fabulous. Right. Uh, but that's not what we wanted to use it for. We no. wanted to do our own art on it. You're, you're way, you're, yeah, you're way beyond that with what how you're doing that. And you're doing that because you are adding coding to it you're you're putting in computer are you how are you how we're are designing you? stuff ourselves yeah that that's that's the point of it for us is yeah. design stuff ourselves most people who buy these machines in the united states there aren't very many in the united states they're chinese machines and they're used in china to mass produce the quilts that you buy at walmart basically interesting um but in the united states they're they're run by uh maybe a quilt shop you know how you can if you if you piece a quilt you can take it to a quilt shop and yeah. have a long arm there yeah um those quilt services might buy a machine like this and quilt a whole bunch of people's quilts yeah. that they bring in and so the person with the quilt will right. choose the choose design one. that they want quilting on it and, yeah. and boom you know it's done in like three hours instead of a week so when you're designing, how are you designing what you're designing? So in terms of, are you, what's your process using this machine in terms of designing what you're, the work you're doing? Well, it started, so the first project was the thousand dollar quilt. And that was a version of a quilt that I had already made uh, sort of by hand, or, you know, by hand or free motion quilting called the $10,000 quilt, which I think is the best quilt I've ever made. So if you look for ten thousand yeah. dollars quilt, that is my favorite quilt that I've made. Okay. Um, and so we were like, well, you know, we make a more consumer. <laughs> it's not really a consumer version, but it's like a, a affordable version of this art. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, the, my use of the machine was definitely informed by my experience quilting already. My experience with fabric. Once Teo and I started doing things with the machine we thought of new things that we could do that you couldn't do without a machine like that. So um, he came up with the idea of double quilting things where you would quilt a layer and then put that layer on another layer of batting and back fabric and then quilt through both layers. So some parts of the quilt would be single quilted and some parts would be double quilted, which gave it this really sculptural effect which is what we were, what I've always been going for with quilting. Cause to me, quilts look like bas relief sculptures and back to what I was saying before about soft sculpture, right? right. Like, yeah. Um, it's yeah. It's like, it's like bas relief. And so we got even a better bas relief effect and pale gray labs. There's some pictures on pale gray labs of the Shiva Natraj quilt, which is also based on a quilt that I've made uh, on, on, you know, hand with a domestic machine. Um, 
basically I, you know, I'd made these things, but each quilt that I made took at least a month and there's no way I would sell them for the prices people pay for quilts. Right. So can we make art at a price that people could actually buy, you know, like instead of $10,000, $1,000. Yeah. And, And yeah, so that's what, that's what we were doing. And lots of other things, too. It was like, yeah, I have this toy. I'm going to use it. So we did the quilt, you know, the little animated experiments, the Moybridge horse galloping. Yeah, that's so cool. It's like the coolest thing. <laughs> I totally well, love it. it. I have one at my house. Um, it is nice. It's a very nice looking quilt. And that was also a collaboration with uh, Chris Carlson, who's uh, also a Mathematica person, um, who did some experiments with how to automate fill designs, fill patterns. Cause watching Leah day and, you know, looking at all of her different patterns that she has and doing it myself also, uh, it's clear to me that there are algorithms that could do this. And, um, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to see that part automated. We didn't really develop it that much, but um, at least the Weybridge horse quilt is sort of a sampler of the automated patterns that Chris did develop. Are, time is the background on the horse sewn, or was that? I'm confused by that. Did you sew? Are those? How, how does? The, how did you make the animated horse quilt? That's that. It's a um, reverse applique, hand mm-hmm. cut reverse applique. Wait, is it reverse applique? I think that's the word for it, right? Yeah. So there's two layers of fabric. So the colored fabric on the horse, those are batiks. Yeah. Um, different colors of batiks that we laid out on the on the batting first and then covered the whole thing with a piece of black fabric. And then the robot stitched it. The fill patterns on the black are the ones that uh, Chris's algorithms Did. drew. That's so cool. And um, then after the whole thing was stitched, by hand we cut out the layer of fabric over the horse so that the batik comes through. That's so cool. And oh, and that was it. another thing. It was like, so I'm not really into piecing quilts. I've always been into the quilting part of quilting. Uh-huh. Uh, but there was this question of how do we get color in these quilts? And reverse applique seemed to be the best way to do it with the robot. That's really cool. It's so interesting. And you also have embroidermation. Embroidermation, yes. which is awesome too. Um, and of course, if you have a science kid like I do, I have an art and science kid, uh, same kid. Um, the pie quilts are awesome. The molecule quilts, the periodic table, they're just genius and amazing. Um, and again, and, that, and that's all Teo. Like, yeah. so I was initially, I was doing all the drawing and Teo was routing it and coding it. Mm-hmm. But at one point Teo was like, oh, we should do a pie quilt. And I was like, well, have the numbers go out on a spiral. And so he did. He basically... You know, my, my contribution to that quilt was have them go on a spiral and everything. <laughs> but it's rocking. It's really cool. <laughs> um, and you sell these. How much of a business do you have with selling these quilts? Well, I don't really know because Tao and I broke up a year and a half ago. And after that, I have hardly ever been going in there and um, uh, just, you know, I don't, I don't really know right now. Yeah. Normally I would be able to give you all kinds of information about that, but yeah. I, since I was working on my animated film and didn't yeah. want to really be there very much. Right. I no, it makes sense. It. Stuff is so cool. I love the horse. I think the horse quilt is my favorite thing so far. I really do. I just think it's so cool. It's well, like, thank you. I did design that one, but it was also a collaborative effort. Well, good things are, there's lots of good collaboration. I like collaboration. So I think that's incredible. Um, uh, other things, uh, let me see my list. I'm not good without my list. Um, creative process covered. Um, so, um, have you thought about, um, exhibitions or putting your work into, um, quilt shows sort of, does that stuff interest you at all? Or you just see it as an artistic endeavor or commercial endeavor. And that's not really where you want to go with the work. It was an artistic endeavor, and when I get to it again, yes, uh, the exhibits, I I would like it to be exhibited. I would like it to be exhibited, though, beyond quilt shows, because um, 
quilt shows are mostly attended by quilters. Yes. Um, there's a particular culture that, um, I mean, I think that they find my quilts pretty interesting, but for the most part, they, they don't, don't seem to care that much. They don't know what to do with you, I'd imagine. About, right? about the weird stuff, you know? Um, I, I, I joined the local quilt guild here in Illinois. Uh-huh. For a year, and, um, <laughs> yeah. of course, the people there are phenomenally skilled. Yeah, um, you know, just just amazing the things that they are able to do, and yet their interests are extremely conservative. Yeah, and you know, I did a whole presentation eventually about the quilt robot and stuff, and mostly the people's response was like, "Oh, that's weird." <laughs> Well, you know, that happens. <laughs> what about the modern quilters? Have you had any contact with them, the modern quilt guild and that? Um, that not, not really, because, again, that seems to be focused on the piecing yeah. and the design of the of the quilt tops. Got it. Um, Got now, it. what I have noticed is that there are some artists that, that break through or that, you know, exist in the art world. Yeah. Uh, and their medium is quilting. They're all men. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I and I thought really Teo should package himself totally. as as an artist because it's what a, we're just in such a sexist world. <laughs> but yeah, like every yeah. You know, every time some artist is you know hailed for using quilt materials, I'm like, yep, it's a man. That's so weird. That's yeah, so weird. There's one fan. There's one fancy art quilt thing that's hard to get into. I don't remember the name of it, but I imagine that would be interesting for you. But I. I can't off the top of the head. It's like a big. It's it's really hard to get your stuff in, and it's like a big. They're big. It's a big big deal thing. It's like an art thing. I don't yeah. know. I don't know anything about it though. Well, I would like to do that, and I, you know, really my my dream or my goal is that somebody will buy my ten thousand dollar quilt for ten thousand dollars, <laughs> so that it will get into the art world, and then that they will sell it for more than ten thousand dollars, and it. I can track its, you know, its journey. Through yeah. the, it's not even a high end art world. I mean, the problem with the art world is that, you know, art isn't really anything unless it's, you know, serious art starts at half a million dollars. Yeah. But there's no half million dollar bill that I could have made a quilt from. Anyway, I wrote this whole essay about the $10,000 quilt. Which is, <laughs> it's worth reading because I, it I will read it. I like it. Well, this yeah. is like, as always, super delightful. And you're awesome. Um, anything else you want to chat about oh, before we, any philosophy should, like, if you could impart your philosophy to other quilters on the copyright side of it, what would you say to them? How to help them understand just one last time what your philosophy is about copyright and art. Would you help us with that? Copyright is bullshit. If they want, <laughs> it's like, um, yeah, it's just, people treat it like a religion. It kind of is a religion. So maybe I shouldn't say it's bullshit. I guess that's sacrilege. I I mean, I think there's moments when copyright is important. Like if someone took your film, Sita, and was distributing it commercially across Asia and Africa, you would not be happy about that, right? No, I want them to do that. Well, and they were charging people for it. And they were charging people. No, that's fine. That would be okay with you too. All right. No, I want that. So usually people, except you and, you know, a few others, and I'm not saying that, I'm just joking, but there's, there, what we, what I keep finding in this is this divide between commercial and non-commercial. So quilters don't want, quilters are upset when someone takes like your $10,000 quilt and then manufactures it, mass produces it in China. That's right. That, that's and that, right, that was a thing. That was a thing with the quilt robot. It was like, oh my gosh, if we have this, uh-huh. if we come up with anything that's desirable, it will be mass produced in China. And right. right. We do all the market research and we put the thing out there. And if anything is good and people figure out there's a demand for it, we yeah. will be out competed. That's really um, interesting. In China. And we just, so that's just reality, right? Just so reality. it's like, well, then we have to figure out what we want to do, right? Do That's we right. really want to be aiming for Walmart where we're going to be outcompeted by China? Probably not. That's probably not where we should be focusing our energies. Yeah. We need to focus on something that, um, you know, well, first, first that our, uh, the fact that we're the first at it gives us an advantage, first mover advantage. Mm-hmm. And second, you know, maybe we don't want to be in mass production. Yeah. Maybe that's not the point. 
Maybe we want to do limited artist editions. In fact, we do want to do limited artist editions.